So who has word the, heard the word data pipeline or the phrase data pipeline? A lot of you, right? Data pipeline, what are data pipelines? Data pipelines are basically, uh, you know, series of programs or, you know, a platform that allows you to ingest, clean, transform and aggregate incoming feed and to create an output data set in the format that is suitable for processing. So your question was, or your question was, how do companies do it in a repetitive way? They set up the data platform, the pipeline. And behind every data science team, there is an operations team, the data pipeline team, that actually whose role is to collect the data and pass it through the pipeline. And, and in different stages, these wrangling, cleaning, and all those sort of operations happen. And there is, you know, I'll, I'll actually come to the next slide, we'll make it more uh, clear. So this was the old way of doing stuff. You have ETL, you have the OLTP databases, you have extract, transform, load, and data warehouse. So, you know, this is the word I was talking, third normal to schema, de denormalization of data. And, but the problem with the data warehousing, this particular setup was that there was a huge lag in which the data actually got collected and it was processed in a warehouse, at least 24 hours. Uh, in my past life, in one of my jobs, I was responsible, I, I worked at Oracle for a very long time and uh, I was responsible for the performance of Oracle's Oracle data warehouse. So the, the data warehouse that collects Oracle's business data. So I was responsible for making sure that it runs, uh, you know, according to SLAs. And the biggest challenge I had was that data was stale. The data that, you know, by the time people in, uh, you know, uh, Japan started working, the US guys were not done, we could not run the ETL and so on. It's an operational nightmare. So in the, this data warehouse land, a lot of, you know, disruption has happened in the last few years. And speci specifically, that disruption has been forced by real-time data analysis. The need to analyze data real-time. So data warehouses also try to you know, reinvent themselves by allowing you to do what we call a trickle feed of data. Trickle feed, so as soon as some data gets updated in the relational system, we'll food feed it into the warehouse. But it was very difficult. It's, it, you know, it's not, in the consist ability to maintain consistency is really difficult. Now, this is the big data high level stages. So there is data ingestion, data storage, data processing, and serving view. So for each of these areas, each of these areas, we have multiple different softwares that cater to or multiple different businesses that cater to each of these operations. Now, as a data scientist, I don't think you need to understand the details of each step, but what you need to know is how overall this thing works. <coughs> so it's a it's for an operational person. How do you uh, for I want to be a data I, I am a data scientist and you want to you want to give me a platform to run my programs. You might think about these stages when uh, and how it's these how you are going to set up these uh, enable me to go through these different stages of operation. Now. So big data sources, social media, sensor data, log data, you know, relational data. This data is often captured by, through processes like Kafka. Kafka is a, probably the most popular of all data ingestion. It's a messaging program which actually captures data and just forwards it to other program. So uh, you, Kafka uh, talks about topics. So you have a producer and you have a consumer. The consumer, the producer writes to a topic and the consumer listens to a topic. That's how the data gets moved from Kafka 
or uh, you know these different things scoop flume and those type of things um, previously when these things were not there we used to write big programs big queries to extract data from uh, databases like what was the number of uh, storage uh, you know orders that were entered yeah. kafka is just a like you have a it's a it's an open source program that you install to read data from a source and you send it to uh, another target the, uh, okay so it's a software that you can live it's very simple it came out of linkedin and uh, linkedin wanted to process large volumes of data so uh, they built a um, uh, this new software where they could collect data generated in web and sort of consume it in their databases data is getting ingested from all these sources that can so is that the, the whole this is all in data, data ingestion this this is a no this is kafka i'm sorry oh, okay. this is kafka i'm i'm just assume that you know what the icon is okay uh sorry um, <coughs> no it's a it's a program written probably in c or python i don't know bibrojit oh. me no java yes uh, uh it's a, the commercial company behind kafka is confluent confluent does a lot of uh, work around that um so after you read the data where do you store the data so you, these are all different storage mechanism that we see common in big data you have hadoop by the way you will get the slide so uh, don't worry about it so hdfs cassandra hbase these are different hbase is part of hadoop ecosystem so you can store data in different formats as well uh, and then once you have the data it happens here processing and also lot of data science activity also happens here you could also put in transformation steps here different companies do it in different ways based on their need ideally this is the place where the wrangling happens the point was that there's a lot of garbage in the data you don't want to copy exactly so exactly but Uh, the collection you could get the garbage out here itself how kafka uh, reads from the data sources um, and then the data serving so you ran all your analysis how do you store the data you could store it in mysql you can see i have cassandra in both data serving it can act as different uh, you know different roles in this pipeline and i'll give you some example i have elastic search i have mysql this is very common uh, where you have done the analysis you have a million records but you have summarized it to a thousand so you don't really need to store it in a hadoop you can make it because now you have the structured format of the data so you can put it here and finally you have all the visualization tools uh, that you can you can leverage to be this is again this is kibana kibana is part of the elastic search stack uh, this is tableau tableau is doing very good these days it is probably the number one visualization tool right now commercial tool and this is pentaho i have not really worked on it but i did some search and lot of people are using it there are other tools like druid uh, i i have not again used it yeah so you can see these different softwares in used in different stages of uh you know of the data pipeline and but these pipelines can be built in using different different softwares so i could use kafka spark streaming and cassandra i have actually worked on this that's the reason i can tell you tell you with confidence that i built a pipeline for that iot sensor data you know actually if you can keep this to ourselves a large network company that is situated in santa clara tasman drive uses this <laughs> so uh, they have used kafka spark streaming cassandra this one is very interesting i have worked with this is this i can share it's not that uh, uh, you know i don't have an nda the us navy actually has a, a project where they collect 
the location of ships. Uh, and the ships are GPS data. They are continuously sending GPS data and they want to alert them if they run into enemy, enemy waters. The ships not always can uh, you know, keep track of where, where they are. So that is one thing and also they, with their satellites they are also monitoring you know, maybe warships from North Korea and all that. So whenever they find a deviation, they would alert their system. So that data is done through this. Yes, sir. So here is the thing, Mat this is for end user consumption. Matplotlib is basically part of Python here, where you want to do some exploratory data analysis and see for yourself, you want to see a, build a histogram quickly to see how the data distribution is. Or you want to do a bar plot to figure out what are the outliers. So the, these are, these are uh, sorry, box plot and, and see the outliers. So these are probably done here. This is for end user. You have the, this is probably, you know, in the Navy example, this is where some guy, some military guy in, in the US Navy is looking at a report and making a decision. So that guy is not going to run matplotlib to, uh, to create the data. This matplotlib is a very scientific, you know, science thingy. So depending upon what data source it is. Yes. You know, will the data in tool be different? Yes. Structured, the tool can tool have to be defined for your based on what your requirement is. If you are reading, if you are getting flat files from a source, you don't need to use Kafka. You can probably go use some other source, other program, your own written program to load the data directly into your uh, you know database. Maybe you know SQL database. Those Kafka is Kafka today is like number one. I mean, if you have if you ask me, Kafka um, has, the popularity of Kafka has grown uh, so much that today even uh, since I come from the database world, database vendors, they want to write uh, like commands which directly integrate with Kafka so that the topic can directly write into a database table. So if you ask me, Kafka is like the one for data ingestion. You can pass in anything, any document that you want. I mean, they have the way to pass. E email would be a text file. So I would say if you are interested in that space to go to Kafka and, you know, and their site Confluent, there is a lot of material on, on, on this thing. Okay. So these are some examples that I have uh, created. Uh, you know, I have done this. Um, so the Kafka Spark Streaming Cassandra was actually an Internet of Things and Time Series example. Uh, this I already told you, the Hadoop Spark and R, that's the US Navy. And this Kafka Logstash Elasticsearch and Kibana, this was more of a um, log data. Log data being read from multiple servers. Uh, have you heard the name of this company, Digital Ocean? Where, so they have servers all over the world, so they want to visualize. In my role at Apple as well, I saw the use of uh, Elasticsearch a lot. They have huge servers. Uh, you know, Apple has a lot, a lots of servers in their data center, and they collect all their telemetry information through Logstash, uh, Kafka, and Logstash, and they put it in Elasticsearch, and they visualize that data through uh, Kibana. So. I have not seen it. They must have used, you know, Apple is like a country. Uh, so maybe some other department uses it. Yeah, this is completely open source. There is something called a Lucene search engine, which is the base of this uh, product. Kibana is, is pretty good. I mean, I have used even Kibana for uh, simple um, exposing. I mean, since I come from the database world, uh, we had customers like AT&T, uh, JP Morgan Chase, who run, who has 10,000, 15,000 Oracle databases. And Oracle databases, they write all the error information, like what's happening in a file called alert.log. 
So it is a good project for us to take the alert.log from 10,000 databases and feed it into Elasticsearch. So whenever something error condition occurred, then there's an error called ORA 600. If that happens, that means the database is going to crash. So we were con continuously monitoring Elasticsearch uh, for those error conditions. And Kibana would report saying that out of 10,000, three got this error in the last one hour. So you could see a pattern emerging out of it. And the biggest thing that we did was, if this error happened, this so correlation between two errors. That is very important. You were, uh, in the last session, you were talking about the causal relationship. Uh, there is also very important to know correlation between uh, two variables, which is the likelihood of one uh, happening. Now, again, a little bit uh, sort of digression. Have you heard the story of diapers and beers? Huh? Heard about it, right? So diapers, in the summer time, the sale of diapers and beers both go up. Is it causal or correlated? <laughs> so it's, 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 it's not causal for sure because you are selling it to two different segments. But there is a correlation. It's the temperature that causes both. <laughs> you drink water more, so the kids use diaper more. So the, the target story, the famous target story where the dad got a letter Congratulations, your daughter is pregnant. <laughs> so, you know, or rather, your teenage daughter is pregnant, which was, you know, was, was created a big story.